imagine the situation you have this reaction. It's a photosensitizer in the triplet state interacts with the oxygen in the ground state, and then it produces the photosensitizer in the, in the ground state plus the oxygen in the triple in the singlet state, either delta or sigma. The energy levels for such a reaction start with the isolated oxygen, oxygen molecule, that in the ground state is the triplet sigma state, and it has a delta state 1 eV above and a sigma state 1.6 eV above. When the O2 interacts with the PS to form the complex, the ground state it stabilizes, and the PS is in the triplet state. And the delta state stabilizes even more. The sigma state out stabilizes, and now the triplet is the uh, the oxygen triplet is the highest of the complex, and we have two singlet states below. So it means that now, if I want to form the singlet oxygen, I should do an internal conversion, either uh, to uh, to the sigma state or to the delta state of oxygen. How can we compute those reaction rates? My name is Mario Barbati and this is the second part of the singlet oxygen photosensitization in weakly coupled floppy complexes talk. That's the second stay at home talk. And in this part, I want to discuss the methods and the results for compute the, the rates of singlet oxygen formation. So, for this equation, we can start again from a very simple semi-classical uh, Marcus model, like, it, like we discussed it in the first part of the talk. Again, you have a parabolic states that are coupled, but now instead of being a triplet to a singlet, you have two singlet states of the complex, and then it's an internal conversion process. One problem to apply the semi-classical model here is that you have the distance between the two uh, monomers, between the PS and the O2, that they, this distance uh, doesn't couple. And then, at the end, for this reaction, what you have are parabolic sheets with this parabola moving parallel to each other along the D direction, the direction of the PS O2 intermolecular vector. Then to be able to do uh, to compute the rates, you have a first hypothesis that the interaction energy between the PS and O2 mainly depends on the intermolecular vector D, and it's uh, it's approximate, approximately uh, it approximately doesn't depend on the PS internal coordinate R. Under such a hypothesis, you can compute the coupling, the reorganization energy, and the delta E, the height of the barrier, with chi pt 2 and then form a minimum set of, calcul of, of results. It's what you call divided to conquer method. Uh, you do a triplet state uh, calculation for the minimum of the isolated photosensitizer, it's not even the complex, it's the, photo, the isolated photosensitizer, and then you do the uh, intestine, compute the intestine crossing point for the isolated photosensitizer. You get the potential energy profile between R0 and Rx, these two uh, previous points. And finally, you get the potential energy profile for the complex along the D direction, but with fixed R. And all these four things are allowed because you are under the hypothesis that uh, hypothesis one works. DTC, divide to conquer method uh, with extended semi classical model, will be valid if all the requirements for the conventional Marcus uh, hold, the same that they discussed in the first part, and they do, if hypothesis one holds. And it does for most uh, for, for, for most of cases that we studied. And the O2 rotation can be neglected. At this point, you could do better, but you have a good approximation so far. And assuming that, you can just 
defining a uh, defined uh, orientation and direction of, of collision between O2 and PS and compute the rate as a function of the distance. Like in this case here, the blue curve gives the rate to form the singlet state in, in the sigma oxygen and the red curve is the rate to form the singlet state in the delta oxygen. And this is calculated for the direction indicated in the figure. That's the, the oxygen is coming perpendicular to the, to the, to the plane of uh, side timing. Now that you have a good method to compute the rate, you can try and apply and get the consequences of this. So let's look at the singlet oxygen photosensitization. We have computed the singlet oxygen rate for 6 uh, as 2 thiotimine for 15 different directions and orientations. Uh, you have the oxygen reaching the, the timing in, the, in, the, in parallel to the plane, out of plane, uh, towards atom 6, 1 or towards atoms 5 and 6. So those codes here in the horizontal uh, axis indicate the several different directions. And for each one of them, you computed the rates as a function of the distance, giving a picture like this. And then what you see in the main graph is the maximum of the rate, the top of the, of the curve. The first interesting result about these 15 directions is the large range of the rates that you got. It span, spans uh, values from uh, over six orders of magnitude for the, for the rate. It's huge. And another interesting feature is that for all directions that are relevant for, for in terms of rate, that have a pressurable rate, they are out of plane directions. So the oxygen is approaching thiamine above or below the plane, not in the plane. And K is, uh, the rate is maximized when the oxygen interacts, interacts with the highest spin density in the, in the photosensitizer. That in this case is uh, the, the out of plane pi. You may form singlet oxygen in the sigma state or in the delta state. And the sigma formation exceeds the delta formation by 10 to 60% depending on the direction. But still, uh, direct formation of the delta can't be neglected. Usually, it's, a, it's assumed in experiment that you form the sigma and the delta is formed afterwards by the activation of the sigma. And in those rates that you have here, indicate that the delta form, direct delta formation is a thing. Moreover, there's an interesting difference between the sigma and delta formation. They have different mechanisms. The sigma uh, formation, it works with small couplings, but small activation energy to compensate. While the delta formation works with a, a large coupling and a large activation energy. And then you have the two being formed in this way. So to close this talk, Shuming Bei and I have are developing a research program to address diverse aspects of singlet photosensitizations. And we have treated the problem in the context of triplet fusion in weakly fo uh, coupled floppy, couple, uh, floppy complexes using tiny nuclear bases as a prototype for the photosensitizer. We developed methods and programs especially tailored to deal with these reactions. There are two main results. The first is that the uh, oxy singlet oxygen production can be tuned by controlling the intrinsic triplet decay 
you can either have a very high singlet oxygen production or very small. That's interesting sometimes. And second import, important re result is that O2 rates are strongly directional and they are boosted by, by the direction towards the spin density of the photosensitizer. Then, if you want a lot of singlet oxygen, sh you should try to trap the PS in a T1 minimum far from the intersystem crossing with the S0 and expose the PS spin density to the O2 attack. So to finish, I would like to thank uh, Xu Ming Bei and also my co-workers, Dr. Xingao, Thomas Newhouse, Walter Thiel and Susan Ulrich, the support from the Amidex Excellence Share, the FET Open Boost Corp project, the ANERW Split project, and the ERC Advanced Grant Subnano. I would like to advertise my uh, fiction book, One Billion Faces, that's a collection of short stories that you can get on Amazon. Thank you.